Shalom fam, this is your brother Taz of Power from GMS Houston, and I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Yahweh double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, peace and blessings to the Akiyam out there doing the work of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, in true faith and in sincerity, which, uh, you know, just so you know, when I say fam, I'm, I'm speaking of those who are in the body or contribute to the body of Yahweh Shai, who make up the church. So this ain't going to any and everybody, you know. So what I want to get into and touch on in this lesson is, you know, we see in the news that they're moving forward with this impeachment and it's going to the Senate for trial, you know, to be tried in the Senate. Now, this is this. All this is part of prophecy, because now that, you know, things are coming to a close. Right. This devil, he's, he's finding himself. <laughs> In the most high's trick bag, he, he's in straits, as the scripture says. And and so uh, we, we don't hit these scriptures, right? But what you have to understand is that we know here at Great Millstone that presidents have no power. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're controlled by puppet masters. They have elite over them who call the shots. The president do not call the shots. So for Trump to come this far and... Uh, Sources say he survived numerous assassination attempts. I don't know, but, you know, it, it has a ring of truth to it. But regardless, outside of that, you know, uh, for Trump to make it this far, you have to understand that he's being backed. He has powerful people behind him. And, and so there are warring factions in the upper echelons of, of rulership of this devil's government. There, there are warring factions and this is about to come to a head. But this is all due to the Most High's will playing out. And, and this is what I want to go into. So uh, we're going to start here. Scripture at hand, you know, uh, book of Job chapter 20 and we're going to go straight to the point. And this is Job 20 verse 22. It says, in the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. You know, so in the fullness of his sufficiency, meaning, hell, when he when he has everything that he basically wants and needs, then the Most High is going to put him in the trick bag. Because what you have to understand is that, you know, life and the Most High, or the Most High, and well, let's just say the Most High, he deals with seasons, and he set up the universe and creation. To deal with seasons. And so now. We're coming to the season. Of reaping. So now it's time for reaping. And every man shall reap. What he has sown in this earth. In this body. Or in his body. In their flesh. Whether it be wicked. Or yeah. Wicked for wicked. Or truth and righteousness. Unto, unto honor and salvation. You will. Reap what you have sown. And there's no it's, it's no way around that. So with these demons, E, you know, the the powers that be, that that ruling nation, which you you people know who's ruling. Y'all know who who's calling the shots, right? You know who who's controlling everything. See, but they have they have sown so much evil mayhem, iniquity in this world. And, and now they're in the fullness of their sufficiency, but the Most High has them in straits because you can't get around. There are certain laws that you're not going to get around. You want to try to duck and dodge the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shab, but his laws, his statutes, and his commandments are universal. They cannot be broken. And when I say they cannot be broken, meaning there are consequences. Yeah, you can break the law, but you have to understand you, there is no getting around the consequences of violating or trans transgressing the laws of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It, it cannot be done. And this is why I have to jump over to uh, Galatians. You know. Galatians 6 and 7, and, and it reads, 
bear with me one second. All right. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai is not mocked. So you will not make mockery of the Most High and his law, statutes, and commandments. See, for a man to transgress the law, statutes, and commandments and think that he's going to reap some type of reward or, or good fortune or, you know, just have it his way, you've deceived yourself. You have greatly deceived yourself, and the Most High is going. He's going. He's going to show you. And the majority of you people in the world are going to find out what it's about here real soon when your house shot come back and, and start putting in that work, which the work is already being put in because the spirit of the Most High is at work, and then you see this devil in decline. But it said, "Be not deceived." Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai is not mocked. All right. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So it seemed that this 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 devil, Esau, Edom. When I say E, I'm talking about these Edomites. It seemed like they was having it their way, man, for years. You know, just coming up, and a lot of people followed that pattern. A lot of people out of every nation. Followed in his footsteps because he was prospering. He steals, he prospers. He murders, he prospered. He he lies, deceives, and you name it. He out there committing heinous abominations and has and and has prospered because why? We were not in the reaping season. We were in the season. Of sowing. So what he was doing and misled you people into doing was sowing seeds of iniquity. Now it's time to pay the piper. <laughs> now these devils are in straits. And they're going to have to reap what they have sown. You will not make mockery of the most high. So please be not deceived. All right. <clears throat> Whatsoever a man soweth. That shall he also reap. Let me uh, see here. Make sure this volume ain't too loud. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of people fell for that deception of E. You know, and now they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to face the consequences. That's why the scripture said, "All those who are joined unto him," out of the book of Isaiah. That's in the uh, 13th chapter. Here we go. Uh, ooh, man. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to start at 11. All right, Isaiah chapter 13, verse 11. This is the most I speak it. And I will punish the world for their iniquity and the wicked for their iniquity. So right, there's a punishment coming, a sore punishment. Don't forget now, these scriptures in them are written lamentations and mourning and what? And woe. Woe is coming to the wicked, man. See, for the elect, why you think we so diligent about getting this work done? You know, because the Yahweh Shai said he won't his with usury. You had cats out there get mad because the apostle said put in the three videos a week. You had cats get mad and fall off. But what, shit, what you think Yahweh Shai coming back looking for? Three videos a week is the bare necessity. That's the bare minimum. Yahweh Shai coming back, he want his with usury. When he gave us these gifts, he want us to multiply. The little three videos is the least of you niggas' worries. But yes, again, Isaiah 13 and 11, and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Esau is the arrogant. Well, he is the proud. And he is very arrogant. So when the Lord say he will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, no one is more proud than these Edomites, than Esau. So he's going to strip them of their arrogancy. See, they, they don't have that same... Uh, <laughs> 
that same arrogant swag that they had. They don't have that same confidence that they once had because, yeah, the Most High is putting them in straits. And we got to go back to that Job. But, uh, yeah, uh, it, it says, uh, uh, oh, Salaki, I'm in the wrong. All right. Yeah, uh, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Now, who's more terrible than these Edomites, man? You, you know, that, that um, was the earthquake? Uh, Salakia. And, uh, well, uh, another hurricane or something that just hit in uh, Puerto Rico. When they had that, what was it, an earthquake? Or, or was it a tornado or a hurricane that hit in Haiti? Uh, a few years back, or uh, a few years so, you know, those people were in distress. They were in dire straits. And then what did Esau do? He went over there and compounded the issues. He compounded the problems. He went over there and raped, robbed, and pillaged. In the words of, of oh, uh, oh, oh, uh, oh, shit. Emmanuel was his name, uh, was his last name. But he, he said, and, and he's he's quoted as saying, uh, never let a good, uh, what, what is it, a good uh, tragedy, that's not the exact word that he used, uh, but, but it's somewhere along the lines of that. Never let a good tragedy go to waste. Uh, what is this guy's name? And I can picture his face, but for some reason his name is spelling me Emmanuel. Uh, but he, he's, a, he's another devil. Uh, and I believe he go back to the Khazars. What's this guy's name? Uh, I'm going to see if I can pull him up. But uh, let me see here real quick. Akiyama. But that's these devils. You see, they're terrible. They are terrible. And, and right at your weakest, man, when, you, when you're when you most vulnerable, that's when they come at you the hardest. They have no compassion in their hearts, you know, but they'll see compassion of you. And we're going we, we gonna, we gonna to read about these devils, all right? I'm going to pull that up real quick. A good crisis. Go to waste. Never let a good crisis go to waste. That's uh. Let's see. I don't want to. Ram Emanuel, Salaki brothers, Salaki. Ram Emanuel said, "Never let a good crisis go to waste." This is their philosophy. The, the scripture tell you they transgress it by wine. Well, that's one of the wines. Uh, another one of the wines that they transgress by. Never let a good crisis go to waste when people are suffering. You know, down on their last, you know, on their last leg. Then they come in and, and yeah, this is this is why, man, you, you devils, man, Most High has a great judgment in store for you. Preserved. Stored up. You understand? You goddamn devils, man. Can't stress that enough, man. Y'all got to go. But anyway, Isaiah 13 and 12, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Right, because most are going to do a lot of killing. There'll be few men left. But who will be made more precious than fine gold? The elect men of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. But the Most High is going to do a lot of killing. Things are precious when they are scarce. So there will be a great scarcity of men. This is why the scriptures say, the fourth chapter of Isaiah, seven women going to take hold of one man and the whole nine yards. That is coming. It says, uh, yeah, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. 
Therefore will I shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place. Yeah, because great destruction is coming in the form of nuclear destruction. It says, uh, yeah, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of Yahweh, Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chase roe and a sheep that no man taketh up. It's talking about these Edomites beginning with the upper echelons, the elite. See, a lot of these low-level Edomites are going to die. But you ones that's up at the top, most are going to let you survive so that you can suffer. The most I want you to suffer, and I want you to suffer. I'm going to take out all my pain and affliction and, and aggression and everything that you made me feel it's going to be returned upon your head. I want you to feel that. I want you to, to, to know my anguish and then multiply that. Because yeah, brothers are meditating terrors. When I tell you brothers are meditating terrors, trust me. Brothers, I didn't hear some gruesome shit that didn't come from, from my brothers. And guess what? They're justified in, in, in they're justified in what they in, in, in what they meditate. You devils got it coming. So it says, uh, 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 all right, again, thirteen. Therefore will I shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of a place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. And this shall be as the chase road and a sheep that no man taketh up. Meaning you Edomites. Y'all going to be hunted and no one's going to provide any shelter or refuge for you. Because everywhere you go, if someone, if someone provides you a, a shelter or a place to hide or refuge, it'll be just like, uh, who was that, who was that lady's name, that woman uh, in, in the book of uh, Judges? Oh, man. I hadn't read that in a minute, but uh, she she invited one of the Midianite princes into her tent, and he thought he was safe. He thought it was all good, and she went and drove a state tent through his temples. You understand? So that's you. You either might gonna be in that same boat. You understand? Y'all gonna be in that same boat if anyone do offer you shelter. This is gonna be for the, they they laying low to slay you. You know? Let me get that lady's name. Uh, oh shit. Uh, I shouldn't know that. I'm the book of judges. All right, uh Okay, uh, the lady's name, the, the wife of, of Ja'al, or uh, uh, Ya'al, see, it may not, okay, her name is, her, her name was, her name is Ya'al, Heber's wife, that's who, Yaal Heber's wife. And this is in Judges chapter 4 and verse 21. It said, Then, then Yaal Heber's wife took a nail of the tent and took an hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it to the ground. For he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. Now, what kind of Spirit do you have? This is a woman. What kind of spirit do you have to have to take a nail and, and one of them one of them mallets, put it to a man's temple, and just bah, bah, and just drive it through his through his skull to the point that say his his head was fastened to the ground? What type of spirit do you have to have? Well, that's the same thing that's coming because the Most High put that spirit on her. Showing you that the Most High is the true terrorist. He is the king of terrorists. 
That's what you Edomites got to look forward to. I do not envy you whatsoever. Whatsoever. Now, uh, it said back in, in, in uh, Isaiah 13, everyone, oh yeah, it's like in verse 14, Isaiah 13 and 14, and it shall be as the chase roll and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. Right, because it's going to be chaos and mayhem. You don't be like, okay, if you're Ishmaelite, you don't be able to trust the Moabite. If you're a Moabite, you don't be trying to trust no Hamite. And vice versa, you see how it goes. So everyone is going to cling to their own kind because this gonna, it's going to be treacherous out here in the world. Worldwide, it's going to be treacherous. So people are going to cling to who they, you know, feel comfortable and safe around. All right, it says, uh, yeah, verse 15 here at the point, and everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. So, right, if you down with Esau and what he got going, then you're going to perish right along with this devil. As the scripture says, you're going to be thrust through. So, yeah, keep on, you know, keep on dealing with this devil and his system and his ways. Letting yourself be deceived and misled by this devil. And the truth is out here, right? The truth is out here. So, uh, I want to go back and we finish those points. You got to go back to Job. And uh, get that point in Job. So again, Job chapter 20, verse 22. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. Which we touched on that in the book of Isaiah. And the wicked there, that word was translated from the Hebrew word imal, which means the sufferers. Those who suffered at the hands of this devil. It can also be translated as the laborers. Those who drew his water, those who he put in servitude, in slavery, in hardcore bondage. And yes, we are still in bondage to this very day. So, right. And that's us as the Hebrew Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. Yeah, we all have suffered at the hands of this devil. And it said every hand of the wicked. We should have been translated, really, uh, the sufferers shall be upon him or come upon him. When he is about to fill his belly, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. See, so this is what's happening right now. Now, you're talking about this, this uh, impeachment process. This only took place twice. Um, outside of Trump twice in U.S. history. This will be the third time that a uh, U.S. president has undergone this impeachment process. So you can't just overlook this. Something major is going down. Big things are happening. And it says, uh, again, just to expound upon this point, uh, so like when he is about to fill his belly, the Most High shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. Now I want to jump over to Proverbs chapter 22 and I'm going to get verse 8. It says, he that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity. And this is what's happening. So in the fullness of his sufficiency, what he don't realize is that now we have crossed over into reaping season. And you can't sow iniquity again. Proverbs 22 and 8, he that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity because you will not make mockery 
of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You sown all this iniquity, rape, robbery, homosexuality, pedophilia, zoophilia, uh, man, witchcraft, sorcery. Now it's time for you to reap. You're not gonna come into the you you you're not gonna uh how how was it worded? Uh Well, yeah, you, you're not going to fill your belly. You see, Trump wants to fill his belly by making America great again. And that's the factions that he served. They want to restore the republic and, and keep this cash cow America going. Now you got, and I don't know who's backing Trump, but you got the Rothschild faction, which they're pushing for the third world war. They want to collapse the economy, bring in the chip, and, and they want to uh, bring all nations into this one world order. See, that's the Rothschild faction and, and that whole cabal. But Trump is of another, you know, there, like I said, there's war taking place. Trump wants to restore America. If he were just standing alone, he would have been out of there. But it's obvious he has major, he, he got some powerful people behind him. And, and so, and this is the most high, this is that trick bag that he has them in. So there's infighting up at the top. And it's filtering down and it's playing out on our level in the form of impeachments. <laughs> you got the, the, uh, the Senate and every Congress, you know, different members against Trump and, and they can't stand him. But they're all wicked. They, they're all wicked. Now, let, let's look at this real quick. This is Proverbs 21, and uh, let's see, uh, verse 10. Proverbs 21 and 10, the soul of the wicked desired evil. His neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes. They're neighbors. They, 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 they all are the same nation. They're all wicked. They're all abominable. They're all going into um, going into destruction. But here they they don't even have favor one toward another because that is their nature. And that is the nature of evil and wickedness. You don't have compassion, even for your own, you know. So uh, right again, Proverbs 21 and 10, the soul of the wicked desire it evil. They desire evil. His neighbor finded no favor in his eyes. Your, your neighbor are those who are like you. See, my neighbor would be a man of Yahweh by Shimei Shah. My neighbor ain't everybody. My neighbor ain't the, the person who lived next door to me. My neighbor ain't another Jake who looks like me. Unless he's in this truth. Now I'm going to go back to Proverbs 22. And eight again, he that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity. And this is what's coming. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits because he's reaping that vanity. Then it goes on to say, and the rod of his anger shall fail. Right, the most high, the rod dealing with power, you know. So the most high is stripping that power. And his power is the anger because his blessing was the sword. Now, what does the scripture say? Um, is Jeremiah 6 and 14. And then we'll end it on that. Now it might be 14 and 6. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Isaiah 14 and 6. I like it. Uh, All right. Let's see here. No, that ain't, that ain't it. Uh, okay, hang on a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isaiah 14 and 6. I'm, it's like I'm in Jeremiah. But, but yeah, Isaiah 14 and 6, and it says, he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted 
and none hinder it. The sheep that no man, the, in, and it shall be as the chase rope. And the sheep that no man taketh up, it said, none hinder it. He's going to be persecuted and ain't no man going to come to his aid. And but again, it says, he who smote the people in wrath. So he done pissed off everybody. He's burned all of his bridges and he don't have, a, he's out, out there on the island, on destruction island, and no one's going to come to his aid because he's burned his bridges and he can't seek no help from anyone else because he's alienated himself from everybody due to his wicked nature. So it says, uh, right, he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindered. So he has ruled the nations in anger, but the most I said again in Proverbs 22 and verse 8, he that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. So the power of his anger shall fail. All that, that wrath and all that shit is coming to a close. This is why the the uh the weak are now saying, I'm strong. Because the most I had took that from him. Took that rod, that power of his anger. They don't fear him no more. Because that's all he had was that fear of that blessing of the sword. Now the weak are saying I'm strong. Iran calling for death, the death of America, China on the on the under, on the low. They, you know, stripping away at the power seat of America as well as Russia. And so America is in great decline. You understand? So I'm I'm gonna end there right there, man. There's a lot more that could be said, man. The water you how about Shmi Shah for giving me the spirit uh to get this lesson out and and, and get it done. I pray that it was edifying for you brothers, you know, uh, double honors to the apostles, a great millstone for sure. You know, hey, those, those, those men now, man, hey, they have, they have done and are continuing to do a mighty work in Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. So, hey, and then peace and blessings to you, Akiyam out there who are doing the work, who are also doing a mighty work in Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, you know. From the least of us to the mightiest. Keep doing what you got to do, man, so this devil can go down. We got to get out of here. So to the next lesson, you better stay up, man. Much love. And